I'm here. Take off your uh, mask to do this. Okay. <laughs> Testing. Testing. Now I'm on. Yep. All right. I'm here. You've got my mic. I'll put my mask back on. Okay. You got me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to pray us in because we're at that point. We're about to start. Are you guys, are you complete with everything? Awesome. Okay. Um, all right. So just all...
of you who have joined us in person, hello, or via Facebook Live and Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, please take this moment to ensure that your cell phones are silenced. We begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation. So I invite you to get still and close your eyes as we play the God's the love that I am chant. You may choose to chant along with it or simply follow along silently, repeating this mantra to yourself. If your mind wanders, simply bring it back to this mantra, God's the love that I am.
And so, our meditation comes to a close. Gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. <coughs> Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you with us virtually or in person. Let us begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. Let's join together in prayer. <sighs> Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air, and it reminds us that God is here, that God is there, that God is beauty, that everything is God. We can never be separate. We can only rejoice. We can only be blessed in every moment knowing that God is all there is. And I know that I am part of this beauty. I'm part of this fragrance of life. I'm part of this joy. I'm part of fun and love and life that God is, that we all have, that we all share. I know that this is the truth. From the center of my being, from every part of me, I know that this is the truth. And we know that that is the truth tonight in this holy place, this place that is love, this place that is joy, this place that belongs to us. And because I know that that is the truth, we have fun tonight. <laughs> we have fun, and we are thankful for this fun. We are thankful for the blessing that is Reverend Sidney and Reverend Diane because they are going to bring it tonight for us. So I say, thank you, God. I release my word into the law, knowing it is perfect. And so it is. And together we say, amen. <clears throat> Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You give so many things. My hope eternally it springs. Lord knows my life is truly blessed. Now your 
goodwill I try to spread And having all of that been said I have one more little, tiny, small request God bless the stupid Heal them from their ignorant ways And if we truly all are one Then you're the part of me that's having a bad hair day God bless the stupid Lord, heal them with your grace And if they can't be transformed Then could you please at least get them out of my face I guess that I should thank you for putting my faith to work but just because I find some compassion for you doesn't make you any less of a jerk so please hear me God bless the stupid the mean and stubborn too Lord knows at times that it's been me and most assuredly at times it's probably been you God bless the stupid and the irritating cross my path I simply can't ignore them though there's nothing I can do or say it's just like gazing on a train wreck and God help me I can't look away so please hear me God bless the stupid the rude and bitter too I know I'm not the first to ask this prayer so forgive them, they don't know what they do. God bless the stupid. Even as I bang my head against the wall, I want to thank you, dear Creator. I know that you bless us all. I thank you with everything I got. I know you bless us all. Stupid or not. <laughs> All right. We're doing a bit of a special event here tonight, so I want to welcome you. Um, our host is Carrie Herrera, Rev the soon to be Reverend Carrie Herrera. <laughs> And the reason we're doing this is because we often get questions. You know, what is this church about? What is it that you teach? What, is it, what do you guys believe? And so we wanted to come up with a way that made it fun, that could answer some questions, that would keep everybody um, engaged, that would, you know, so you know who we are, what we believe, why we believe it, and why the heck we're here. So um, I'm going to just welcome, give it up for <laughs> Carrie Herrera. Take it away, Carrie. How do you want to handle it? Welcome to TV City. <laughs> All right, here we go. So on the podium, you know we have our Reverend Sydney. Thank you. And we have our special guest, all the way from Oregon, Reverend Diane. Thank you. Now, before we get started, I'd like to know a little bit about each of these ladies, wouldn't you? Okay, right. thank you. Audience participation is encouraged today. Yes, absolutely. Yes. No, just the phones need to be silenced. Everything else is okay. Okay, Reverend Sydney, would yeah. you like to tell us a little bit just about yourself? Just a little yourself? bit, yes. I grew up in Science of Mind and New Thought, and I got my practitioner training here at this church and was licensed in 2000. I've been living in Oregon for the last 17 years and moved back here in August to become the assistant minister of this church. My career has not always been in ministry. I was a musician for many years. I still am. Um, I played piano for Dizzy Gillespie and I subbed for Stan Kenton and I have done recording and shows and, and all sorts of stuff like that. But my path and my heart right here and now are with ministry, and I'm so happy to be back. I love you. I love you, man. <laughs> so, 
Okay, rock and roll, Reverend Sydney. <laughs> Reverend Diane, over to you. Tell us All a little right. bit about well, it. Well, this happens to be my first church home as well in North Hollywood. Um, I had a flat tire in front of the church and came in to use the phone, and I stayed. <laughs> I got my practitioner training here as well. Actually, that story is a lot longer. I had um, gotten a hit on my head with a cabinet in the kitchen and uh, had to go get stitches that Sunday morning very early. And I had caked blood on my hair and I had my nightgown on and my robe, or no, a trench coat, so I could go out in public. And um, when I finished getting my stitches, the big rainstorm here, huge. Flooded. It was back when we used to have rain. Yes, there was rain here, and it was so bad that it flooded the streets because they were not prepared for that kind of drainage. And so I had a little Volkswagen at the time, and it kind of floated, and because <laughs> I had to take some different turns to get home, and I had a throbbing headache at the, from my stitches and the hit on the head. And um, I got a flat tire in front of the church in the rain. It was pouring, like coming down like sheets, like I'd never seen before. And so I ran across the street and saw that there was a church. I wasn't even cognizant it was Sunday. And I came into, there used to be a little tiny lobby in the front. Was right it there. was over here. Yeah, yeah lo big difference. And there just happened to be a very deaf, sweet usher. And I whispered, because I heard, oh, it's a, it must be Sunday. I heard service going on through Wally. the doors. And um, do you know who it was? I think it was Wally. No, it was Bill Hopped. Oh, OK. Ancient history. Some I go of way you know. back. Yeah. And it was a very sweet man. And I whispered to him because I thought the service was going on. And I didn't want to make noise. And, and he just nodded his head, his little carnation in his lapel, and ushered me into the church, to the back pew. I had a trench coat, nightgown. I was dripping wet. I had blood caked in my hair and a screaming <laughs> headache. And I heard, the first thing I heard from the minister was, there are no accidents. You are the cause of your every experience. <laughs> I did not kill him. He became my mentor, and rest is history. I've been a minister for 30-some years. Yep, there we go. Wow. Thank you. It's good to be home. Wow. Wow, so talk about signs, right? Yeah. Oh I had to have a hit goodness. on the head in yep. order to get yep. it. Right over the head. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we've all been there. We've all been there, right? <laughs> all right, ladies, well, thank you. Let's begin. Round okay. one. We're going to bring you over here so all the right. camera I'm, can get I'm your coming. back. I'm coming. Here we go. <laughs> So we are asking questions, and, and the first round of questions, um, well, it, basically, these are the questions that we get. So a recent congregation audience was, we, we polled an audience, and this is what we got. So you're going to want to use the mic so we can hear you. All right. Oh. All right, you ready? Yep. Question number one. Who's this for? Which one of us? This is going to be for Reverend Diane. I accept the it kind of it kind of fits with whatever you what just, I just told said. us. Uh -oh. Okay, so okay. why can't I heal myself from a broken bone? <gasps> oh my goodness! Well, you know you can heal yourself from a broken bone. It's just a matter of how long you have been working on your spiritual uh, awareness to recognize your own wholeness. Because healing is a new understanding, and anything can be healed as a result of a new understanding. Wow. I have to interrupt here. All right, fine. Oh, here we go. So is it you healing yourself, or is there something else that's healing you? I, I have nothing to do with it. I, okay. am, I am opening myself to an awareness that ah, I did not have. Okay. I was just wondering if you could heal You can't some stump of me. Oh, uh oh here oh, we go. <laughs> the challenge. Dun, dun. The, the gauntlet has been. OK, go for it. OK. Are you complete? Never. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Reverend Sydney, here we go. Do I have to stay positive all the time? Can't I just have a bad day? You can have a bad day, absolutely. You do not have to stay positive all the time because as we said in class last night, when you are looking around at your life and there's stuff that's going wrong and you try to say, oh, this is awesome, that's putting whipped cream on garbage. So we have to tell the truth <laughs> about what is happening in order to know what is calling for healing or transformation. So yeah, a bad day is sometimes those are the, the, the most wonderful days for growth and for information and to build some muscle around maybe it's forgiveness, maybe it's acceptance, maybe it's, a, it's time to know yourself in a different way, Sydney. So you can have a bad day. Don't pass it to me. 
don't give it to me, don't blame me for it, don't blame, well, you can blame her for it, but don't blame me for it. If you have a bad day, just look at it and, and see it for what it is and know that the sun will come out. Okay, that's enough. It certainly is. Okay. Whipped cream <laughs> on garbage. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Oh. You just don't camp out in the desktop. Thank you. Oh, very yeah. nice. Thank you. Thank you. Audience participation. Right. Thank you. Thank you. We like that. Right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's go start back with Reverend Diane. Right. How about, oh, this is a goodie. Why do I have to tithe? Oh, my goodness. How can you not tithe is a better question. Tithing is circulation, and it is the free flow that must occur. If you, can't, if you only can inhale and you don't exhale, what do you got? Dead is what you got. And that's what happens to your prosperity if you don't inhale and exhale at the same time. Giving is our nature, and our fear is what prevents us from giving. So just check out your fear and see what's holding you up. You have a belief that you don't have enough? Well, there's a lot of work to be done, and that's what we're here for. Nice. I don't know about you, but I like to inhale and exhale. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, what? what, what? Just in. Hold, hold on. Uh -oh. My understanding is we've had some additional questions from the audience. Mm. Um, Ma'am, well, oh, do you yes. have that basket the express, there? That's, that's you. May, may I? May yeah, I you're, have, you're the express I? stuff. Bring it on over. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm getting help from the rock star. <laughs> Thank you. Mary Catherine. Thank you, Mary and Catherine. Pat Wilson. And Pat Wilson. Thank We're you. We're divinely inspired to create some more questions. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Because I used to wonder this when I first started coming here. Who's this for? This is going to be for Reverend Sydney. All righty. What are those folks sitting vigil doing? Mm. Those people over That's there. That's a great question. They're mm. not snoring, they're not sleeping, and they're not trying to think of all Thank of the you. things they should be doing, although sometimes that does happen. But what they are doing is they are in meditation. And it's not just a personal meditation. They are a meditation to remind themselves and therefore reminding everybody in the room at the deepest spiritual level, level that we are all connected, that God is fully present, and that God is active. And having someone else know that higher truth for you, especially as a minister when you're speaking, and you know that someone over here is praying and just absolutely clear that you are in order, on intention, and clear and receptive to whatever wants to come through is really, really powerful because here's part of it too. We believe in the oneness of all of us. So one person knowing that means that that idea circulates and surrounds and fills all of us. So they're holding vigil. They're holding the high watch. They're holding the highest view possible of the activity and presence of God for everyone in the room. And it's a bigger job than what the minister has. It's, it takes a lot of energy yeah, to stay does. there and, For an hour. and yeah, and and create the energy, and it's a swell of energy, yeah. and especially sometimes like in board meetings, I would have practitioners hold vigil. For our board meetings because complicated decisions and sometimes some heated discussions and we'd have to call on that person who was centered and clean and that's what it's all about for yeah. me it's just, right. and I like that in, you know in the Absolutely. sanctuary as well centered and clean yeah you can depend on that that's what they're doing and I can tell you from experience it's especially difficult to sit there when there is a very inspiring service going on lots of music lots of dancing lots of everything going on to actually just to, to yeah, stay you're there the one who doesn't get to play very very hard yeah. and not yeah. start you know, True. rocking your body around. <laughs> okay, Reverend, Reverend Diane, I think this, I would love to hear your, your answer to this one. I look around and there's so much bad stuff going on. How does God let that happen? Oh, God doesn't let anything happen. God gives us free will. We are God, experiencing ourselves as God as best we can at any given moment. And the things that we see and experience, watching the news, whatever it is, um, we have to develop a filter that uh, is like, like your air filter cleans before it gets to you. And it's a matter of moving your own mind to hold a higher vision in the midst of the pain. And we're not always right on target with that stuff. And we've got a lot coming at us. We've had quite a lot in the past few years. Um, but it's, 
it's not about God letting it happen. We pray, some people pray to God as if it was outside of themselves. And it is not, it is us. It is us expressing and we are the ones that need to open ourselves to see as God sees. That's one of my favorite yeah. ideas, to see as God sees. And the one thing I would add to that, Diane, is that we, um, we are not praying to God, we are praying from God. We are praying from an awareness of God. Mm -hmm. And that it's not that God lets anything happen, it's um, we let things happen. Or how are we going to respond when things happen? How do we show up as the highest version of God in any given situation, be it a, a tornado in New Orleans or um, a war in Ukraine? How do we show up? How do we live as God in the world? We choose our responses yeah. and that, it, that we are totally at power, at cause. And God is, and God is ising through us mm. and has nothing to do with our decisions. It uh, doesn't intervene. It doesn't intervene, knowing there's no personality here. And so, you know, if um, Sydney gets out of hand, she has to take a, a little bit of. <laughs> what She's happens? Crossing a line. <laughs> <laughs> well, well what, you know, what if I yeah. give you a little conflict to deal with? Right. You know, right. did mm -hmm. God have anything to do with this? Ooh. I don't know. Maybe I'm just God expressing Ooh. like that. Cat oh. fight. Cat fight on the pulpit. Never seen that oh, one before. She's a stronger God than I am, evidently. <laughs> Fell off my seat. I love you, honey. I love you, too. All right, girls. You know what? I, I, I'm... Oh, yeah? Yes. Yes. Also, since we're all one, the conflict we're seeing is a part of us. It's a reflection, I think. Yep. Give her five, five points, too. <laughs> yep. And that until I don't uh, have the conflict within me, I won't see it mm -hmm. out here. Yeah. Okay. Good point. I Good agree. Point. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We, we have to constantly clean ourselves to prepare ourselves. To, you know, that's why we pray. That's why we meditate. We have a practice so that we're ready when it all comes in. And we often want to change all of the situations out here thinking, well, if I could just fix this, if I could just fix this. Fix which me. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's the same thing as when I have a, a, a bad hair day, I can either comb my hair or I can comb the mirror. One's going to have an effect on, on the, the experience. Another one will not. I just don't know how to fix you. <laughs> Baby, I don't know how to fix you. Yeah. We'll work on it. Yeah. So I heard all of this, and I believe this, and I practice this. Mm -hmm. But even the question that I have, and it's right here in front of me, what about Putin? <laughs> ah, what about Putin? which is like, what about Hitler? What about Saddam? What about anybody who shows up in your experience who is, we call it bad, we call it evil, we call whatever that is. So we, th there are a number of things about this. We always have a choice, once again, on, on, are we gonna react and, and just get frozen in that reaction of, God, I can't believe this is happening, which we do. And by the way, it's a really convenient thing to do so you don't have to take action or yeah. responsibility. Or we can respond from a place of, wow, what is my role here? And sometimes the only thing we can do is pray and to forgive and to know. And there's something else too, because we've talked about this. I have worked with people and, and discussed the idea that when we have a Putin in our lives, when we have a Hitler in our lives, when we have any of that, not to minimize the suffering in any way, shape, or form, but if we have not yet healed the separation within ourselves, the fear within ourselves, the pain within ourselves, we will continue to collectively demonstrate a Putin, a Hitler, and, and we will be looking at, we will looking for, be looking for those things because we like to assign evil to someone else. And it's not even that it's evil, but it's, it's that we have the capacity to bring love in to any situation. And one of the things I teach my students is, okay, if, you, if there's a political leader or someone that you just can't stand, if you can bring yourself to seeing that person as a helpless infant crying for love, because everything in this world is, is either a cry for love or it's a demonstration of fear. It's a cry for love. So if we can begin to look at all of these experiences as a cry for love, 
even if we look at that and say, I cannot love that man, we can go within and say, there's that within me which can love that within him, within her, whichever that situation is. I want that to happen now and to allow it to be, to be available to it. I might still have my opinions and I don't want to have lunch with him, but I would be able to bless him from across the street, perhaps. You know, maybe not in the same room, but we, you know, we do the best we can. We want to, if forgiveness can happen just a little tiny bit within ourselves, guess what? That's, that raises the consciousness for everybody and rising waters float all boats. And I like something you were sharing earlier today um, in, in private. It was a, the idea that we can, now I've lost it, it went away. Anyway, I was thinking Return to Love. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Um, is that a Marianne Williamson book? Yes, yes it to is. Love? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and it's, it's very difficult. I'm not saying this is easy. You know, those of us who practice, we are just as much arm wrestling with it's race consciousness, you know, and you were talking about how we, we may be working our way, or was it somebody else, working our way out of the darkness that, you know, this is um, a, a time for. Um, we're going to burst through, you know. They yeah. say it's always darkest before the dawn. That we have a, uh, we have an opportunity here. It is so difficult. I, I'm, you know, I'm not in the best place about Putin, and I'm working on myself. But that's the key, I think. And it's I'm going to add to the collective consciousness the power for returning to love. I am going to learn and keep learning how to return to love when I think of him because he's not going to heal and those like him and that consciousness that creates it, I have to heal it in myself. Yeah, yeah. We have a war going on and how war happens is because I am warring. I have war going on in me. And as soon as I come to peace and return to love, I'm adding to the consciousness of healing what's going on. And you know what? What an opportunity all we have and we're all rising to the occasion um, to help the people of Ukraine. We are sending so much love and so much prayers, and I know they're feeling it, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, what about Putin? Well, thank you, Putin. Thank you, because I'm really learning and growing, and I know you're moving us forward into the light. This is a part of us moving forward into the light. It doesn't feel good, but that's where we're going. Michael Beckwith, I just thought of this, well, Kyle, something like this, an evolutionary driver. Yeah, it's or an evolutionary trigger, and it causes it causes us to grow more. It causes us, you know, there's a course in miracles um, idea about being willing to see things differently, or God, how can I see this differently? Spirit, mm -hmm. show me how to see this in a different way. And I know that for myself, whenever mm -hmm. I have said a prayer like that, especially when I'm in the midst of of rage or anger about a situation that's personal or out in the world, the moment the moment I say I'm willing to see this differently there's light that begins to dawn, or at least there's a sense of peace that begins, you know, there, I, I open up a little bit. Oh, and Sam's got a comment. I, I have a question, if I could. It's, it's, yeah. It's uh, on this, this topic. Has our founder, Ernest Holmes, ever spoken on, well, he lived during and through World right. War II. Mm -hmm. Are there any writings specific to that that prayer he wrote? Prayer for peace. That would be, well, the prayer for peace, we know, that's true. Was there any other writing specific to maybe the Holocaust, to Hitler, where he spoke out with, uh, with language that maybe we're using here tonight that mm -hmm. we could read during this time wow, that that's we're going great. through something. Yeah. Is, is that out there? Because I've tried to look. I don't have, all the, I don't have the library that, that either of you have, but I'm just curious. That's a good question. Do you know? Um, you know, I don't know of any a specific address um, other than the world prayer for world peace, that, uh, but his... This thing called you. Yes. Thank you. My favorite book. Yeah, yeah. And, and this thing called uh, life. Life. That's the, yeah. the other, the two. I think it's this thing called you. My experience of it the very first time was about this answers all the questions to world struggle and suffering. If I can hear this, it, it moved me so deeply. I was baby in this. And um, that book helped heal my fear of the, being the world out of control. And I remember it addressed it in so many ways, and I couldn't tell you right this minute because it's been a million years, but the book itself, the, the journey in that book 
is it teaches us who we really are, so how could we possibly be boring? And I, I remember thinking that's what it was about. This is about world peace. Yeah. And that's all I know. I don't know specific. Um, that's it. And I'll go through some of it because I have transcriptions of a lot of his talks that he gave. Oh, yeah, talks he'd be and I, a lot And of that them. might be more contemporary to the time. But the other thing that occurs to me, and I'm so glad you asked that, is I will, and remind me, like text me later and remind me, because I will go through and I will either find something that we can use or I will put stuff together that we can use. I will collate stuff together that we will have available as a prayer here for the church. That's nice. I'll make sure that we have it in the foyer, if not this Sunday, by next Sunday, that will allow us to, you know, to use these principles in a way that perhaps this, this paragraph, that sentence, and this affirmation. So if I will curate that, but just remind me to do it, okay? Yeah. And I, I have to interrupt this program. I, I, it wasn't you, it was you. You were the one talking about it. You want to talk about it? No, oh, Amanda. About about evolution and your, your view on that. What you were talking about. No, it was good. So this is one of my girlfriends, Amanda, who also came down from Oregon with Diane. And she's a teacher. She's a student. She's one of my practitioners. We created a practitioner program at Unity of Portland. And, and she is one of them. Take your mask so, off. So what about Putin? Okay, so we were talking about um, death throes and how some of this ideas that are coming up are actually moving us forward and creating a spiritual evolution for us. Um, and by bringing to light some of the atrocities that are happening, meaning being enacted in front of our eyes, allows us to recognize that this is a physical thing and gives us an opportunity to kind of look at within ourselves, like Reverend Diane was saying, um, where I'm feeling uncomfortable or I'm worrying or where am I fighting. Mm -hmm. And by meditating and focusing on that, creating space for what's happening out in the world as, um, you know, and like end result gives me the opportunity to look at where I can change and the, the footsteps. And as we um, begin, sorry, um, as we begin to make those changes and within ourselves, then we are then affecting consciousness outside and the ripples begin. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. You win. She's a good student. Yeah, and you know the death throes <laughs> idea is pretty stunning because when something is dying, the last stages of flailing, it's the most violent, yeah. if you think about it. And when it comes to that point, something else has to happen. Something has to die for something else to be born. But, uh, paradigms, new paradigms, in order for them to emerge, the old system has got to dissolve. It has to move out of the way. So it's that idea of, of a new thing has to push through the dirt. And if the old dirt is a, a belief about how this system has to work, how this has to be, how leadership is, how politics have to be, all of that stuff. I mean, we have seen the death of structures. We've seen the death of yes. protocols and paradigms over the last several years because they simply weren't working. But it had to get so big and so so obvious before any of us would say, oh my God, this is a problem. And maybe not for me or people who look like me, but it is a problem for other people because they are experiencing this and I just was blind. The scales have fallen from my eyes and now I see that there are issues where we have accessibility, social justice, racial justice, inequality that have to be addressed. We don't get to play like it's, uh, Ah. It's called waking up. We get to wake up now. Yep, we, we have been to asleep wake up. On and many the thing areas. is, if we're going to, you know, there's a deep call right now for this universe and this planet. If we're going to live, oh man, we better wake up or else we're not going to have this. And I would like to see grandchildren, by the way. So would you please, if for no one else, would you do it? Because at some point my son will meet someone, fall in love, and we'll have kids. And I want grandkids. <laughs> yep. I'll do that. <laughs> Anyways. And that's what we're here for, yeah. you know. It's what everyone is here for, and out there in film land, um, that's our purpose. When we come here to learn who we are, and to bring forth mm -hmm. God within us in our particular unique way, we are contributing. And the more you do it on your own, and the more you learn here, the more you take out there and teach, 
we will get there. And we are getting there. It's not like a, a we will, we are. We are, yeah. Yeah, and it's unfolding. And that's what we need to see and keep our eye on. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, first you, and, and, then, and then you. Thank you. Well, I will repeat the question. Thank you, Sam. Don't worry about it. We got it. Even though I've been with this um, philosophy of learning yes. in the church for a long time, not maybe not here, but in the philosophy, it's really hard to process. Yeah. You, I don't know anybody from Ukraine. I don't know anybody from okay. Russia. Right. I get really close. Yeah. I see people, but I don't know. But to see the pain yep. and going through okay. the island, Right, okay. Right, so. Right, it's really hard for me not to feel hopeless. Right, okay. When I see the pain, and I say, well, how many years in the church? How I deal with this? Right. When it's not the I went through that. Right, okay. Even though I don't know these people, but still feel the pain, and I feel the anger too. So we have, so I want to just give you a sense of what. And if I understand what it is that you're saying, is, and, and I know you didn't hear what your, the live streamers, but what she's talking about is when we see this stuff that's happening in Ukraine, we see in other countries, third world nations, where people are suffering and we feel so deeply, we have such deep compassion and deep empathy and we want to help because you have been through it personally. You have gone through it. Did you say helpless or hopeless? Hopeless. 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 Okay. And so how is it that, we, and I'm, I'm guessing your question is, how can we affect change? How can we do something? How can we begin to be part of a healing? Give me a question real quick. Yeah, my question is, like she said, we have to heal inside, right? Yeah, yeah. But it, Where are you powerful? Is, but my heart doesn't. Yeah. Where are you powerful? When you feel hopeless, what I ask myself is, where are you powerful? Where do you have the power to make a difference regarding what you watch on television when you well, see right these now people? I'm just judging. You know, right now, I don't, I, don't, I don't see it. Just judging the left and the right mind. Okay, so the power that you have is, is to, so, um, and because we don't want to get too far into this because we can't get it on, on Zoom, I want to make sure. But so there is this aspect of, what is the power we do have and how can we touch other people yes. with it and also not get taken out? Mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally by what we see. Your so, practice will keep you practicing. Right. That's the thing. You can't give up. You can't stop. You don't get to be hopeless anymore, ever again. And hope isn't a strategy. It is not a strategy. Now, faith is a strategy and mm -hmm. planning is a strategy and taking action in intention, positive loving intention. Those are the strategies. And so I'm going to go yeah. on. Thank you. I'm going to go on and ask your question real quick. Right. And when I teach it, I teach it that you read it first person presentation. Yes. Right, absolutely. Yep. Yes. Yep. I think we were and all I taught that. I've this book more over the past right. three months. Yeah, I got it. Go so it is. So what is she. Here, what, yeah. Right. Here, right. And, and I, get, I, I just get angry. Right. And then I go back, I pick up the book, I open it to one of those italicized parts. So it, I'm going to jump in here. So this thing called you is the book she's talking about, again, written by the founder of religious science, Ernest Holmes. And it is one of the most powerful books. He actually wrote it, I believe, before he wrote the textbook. Oh, yeah. And he talks about so many aspects of who and what we are and the power we have to choose how we are going to be and to know that we are divinely sourced at all times through all things. And the, to get that book, because it is absolutely... It's a big meditation. It is, and it's contemporary now. It is worthy now. It's worth it mm -hmm. now. I download it now, buy it now, and use it and say those things in the first person as an affirmation. Okay, do you have more questions for us? <laughs> yes, we do. You know... What was the last question, anyway? What I forgot to mention <laughs> is that this show is called Stump the Ministers. Oh, Okay. <laughs> And I don't think it can happen. I don't know. I don't well, know, that's but, very but kind of you. But we're gonna we're gonna move into racy round two. That okay. Was the end of Ooh. round racy one. Racy round two. Racy. End of round. That was it's a long racy? round one. Okay. Now, racy um, round two. And, and let me just say, because we have such incredible tithers, we don't have to go for a station identification. Okay. There okay. We, go. we have a wonderful oh, budget here. Okay. I like it. 
Oh, I, I like this question. I feel like it's going to bring us sort of. Okay. Okay, here we go. Why do I keep hearing about Jesus in this teaching? Okay. You want me to hit that one? Sure. Okay. Jesus was the great example, not the great exception. This is how we hold him as a human being that walked the earth at one time. And he is a great teacher. When you glean what Jesus had to say and the position he held in his time, um, it's, he's someone we can follow. It's someone, but we don't worship Jesus. We don't hold him as the only son of God. He never said that. He said, our father. And so what we dwell upon is the consciousness of the man, as far as we can glean from all the interpretations that have gone through the Bibles, the red letter, et cetera. Um, we focus on the consciousness that that man, he was a man, and that's the good part of it. He was a human being, but he reached his mystic self. Mm. He knew his union better than anyone we know other than some of the other people, Buddha, Muhammad, whoever, you know, was uh, gleaned the truth um, in a way that was not limited in any way. He knew the truth, and through that knowing of the truth, he healed. And he said, those things that I do, you also can do, and better. I was going to jump in, and, and mm -hmm. Jesus isn't our savior. Jesus That's is right. our teacher. Nobody's going to save us. Yeah, our wisdom worship. about who we are as divine beings, our, our Christ being, mm -hmm. is right within us. That Buddha light, that Christ light, that is what saves us. And saving meaning lifting us up and correcting our perceptions and bringing us into a greater sense of connectedness with the divine. Because there is only one problem, and it is separation from God. That's right. it. That's all we have to heal is our right. belief that we are separate from right. God. I think this can relate to this young lady's question behind us. Okay. If I pray once, why do I have to keep doing it? You know, so Ernest Holmes talked about this and, and said, if you know, if you know and you know that you know and you are so absolutely certain and you get up off that chair and you, you get that this is done, there has been a movement in consciousness, there's been a movement in the law, because by the way, we're not moving anything out here. It's all within us here. If we know, then pray once. But here's the thing, most of us have to get up and then sit back down again. Get up, sit back down again. <laughs> because what happens, and Jesus called them the little foxes that nibble on the vines, <laughs> we get up from absolutely knowing the truth. I am whole, perfect, spiritual, and this is done. Boom, I am, I am on my way, I can fly, all of that stuff. And over here you go, but what if I can't? What if I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too tall, I'm too whatever it is, and then somebody else calls and it's your mother, and she goes, well, you can't do that. Or it's the voice of somebody, or, or the TV. So then we have to put those cheeks back in the chair and come back into a deeper awareness of our union with the infinite. That's why. We Thank don't you. pray to change God, we pray to change us. There you go, that's yes, the one. Is. That quote I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it really, it, the thrilling part about praying and is not worrying about the outcome and not designing it. Mm. Um, yes, there is a place in treatment and in the process of treatment. It's a process of moving your own mind. We're convincing ourselves of the truth. Whatever we need to tell ourselves in prayer to convince ourselves of the truth of our being is what heals. Yeah. If we step outside of that, and start telling ourselves, oh, you know, yeah, but mm, I'm not sure. All that stuff, which is human. I turn it over when I finish a treatment and whatever else it is that I need to know, please. Because I don't know. And the good thing is, I don't know. And I don't have to know. I don't have to know how or why. All I have to do is remember the truth of my being and my connection, my wholeness. As you just said, we are not separate. That's the only thing, healing that needs to happen is a belief that we are separate from what we call God. Right. How do you be separate from uh, yourself? Yeah. You can't. I'm going to interrupt because I know that our time is running short. Can we jump to our lightning round? Oh, yes. Let's okay. do that. So well, we that's because you talk too long. I was, I was just going to say, I ministers are you. very long-winded ministers. Yeah, we are. They like to speak. 
Okay. So the lightning round. They do what round, they do. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Lightning round. Ooh, it's red. So how do we do the lightning round? What are we doing? So the lightning round is fill in the blank, uh -huh. and you're going to ask all the questions of one, and then flip the card and go to the next one. How's okay, that? Okay, so, so apparently you have a card, and you have a card. That's right. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Are we ready? Reverend Sidney. Yeah. Fill in the blank. Life is forever seeking greater... Expression. <laughs> Shall I go back and forth? You want to no, answer? No, no, go ahead and read yours. Keep, okay. yeah. There is no place where God is blank. Not. There's no place where God is not. <laughs> There's one life. That life is God. And that life is perfect. That life is my life right here and right now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Bippity boppity boo. <laughs> Oh, that was That's good. That's 25 points. Oh, my God. Reverend Sydney. Beat that with a stick. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Reverend Diane, you got this. You ready, Reverend Diane? I'm ready. All right. Fill in the blank. <laughs> mm -hmm. Change your thinking. Change your... Deodorant? <laughs> oh, life, life. <laughs> How do you shoot? No helping. No helping. She gets she gets extra for the humor. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we all do. Okay. I am the light of the blank <gasps> world. And you really are. I am. I know. As are you. Thank you. As are you. It takes one to know one. That's true. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. There is one life. That life is God. Okay. That I'm life. Use is... your name. Oh yeah. Oh right. yeah. Right where I am, God is, and all is blank. Well. All is well. At Unity Church, we stomp the floor on that one. Yeah. All is well. Stamp. To stamp that it's truth into our awareness, into our consciousness. Okay. Okay. And this is for the win. A tie. <laughs> Except for the humor. Oh. Got you one more point, so it's for the win. Oh, good. It's for the win. Uh-oh. Mm. In the beginning, blank. Why? There was God and the Word. <laughs> I'm going to say, hold on. In the beginning, God and all things. In the beginning, God. We go to God. Yeah, that there. is the beginning. And why? So I got it right. And why? And why? 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 Oh, why in the beginning, God or the Word? Um, it is the beginning of all creation mm -hmm. is returning to the whole and there God go. is the whole. That's it. And there it what is. a great game. <laughs> Woo! All now right. let's make them do it. So now we have, we're going to come back to what, okay. There's a program. I, I'm going to do a quick spiritual mind treatment because we got to get, because I know Sam's got another gig. So we're going to do this right now. So. We take all of this joy and this laughter and recognize that we do absolutely stand as the truth of God, as the celebration of God, the celebration of the divine, each and every one of us here as that bliss that God is. And how wonderful to know that as we make ourselves available to greater wisdom, to greater love, to greater compassion and humanity around us, that we each can be that blessing. We each can bless the world. We have that capacity. So I know that as I bless myself, as I bless this church, as I bless everyone here, that truly, as we move out into the world, we are that walking, blessing light of God. So I bless this church, I bless all churches, all mosques, all ashrams, all synagogues, all cathedrals, all paths to God. And I know that we each are walking each other home into a sense of wholeness, of peace, of wonder, of delight, and of love. And so it is all such a wonderful, wonderful thing to know. And I am so grateful. I am so grateful. I release this word. And as I do so, I speak my word saying that I accept these truths for myself and for all beings everywhere. And I know that it is absolutely so. And together we say, amen. <laughs> Take it. You got it right. It's <laughs> yours. Let's turn her up. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I Yes, I'm 
praying also that we do this online, that we can drop the offering in the box as we leave. There are so many ways, and Carrie will tell you about it later. But take this idea and hold it to your heart, and together we say our affirmation. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say Amen. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we raise. woman makes jewelry and you have the opportunity to check that jewelry out as you leave but also she can I ask you to do this just a tiny tiny snippet okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. share yeah. she does she does the best impression of share ever so I want us to leave <laughs> laughing are you gonna pray us out or do we we already did the thank yous and everything I oh you know what no because we haven't done announcements so right. we'll do it after that yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay all right so we have announcements and then I'll pray us out and then we'll do it all right sounds good and we'll get out of here almost on time <laughs> How y'all doing now? Doing all right? Did you have a good time? All right. The announcements for tonight. For all the ways you can make donations to our church, go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service, in person, and on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Meditation is at 6.50 p.m., service at 7 p.m. Join Reverend Sidney next week as she shares on Season for Nonviolence. Beyond churchianity? Churchianity. churchianity. Thank you. <laughs> Radical oneness and peace. The 17th century poet Rumi wrote, Out beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I will meet you there. The spiritual path is the path we are on, whether we recognize it or not. Our oneness cannot be denied, broken, or argued out of. The universal presence is bigger than all of us. Will we yield? Grief su support group on Zoom. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets this Sunday at 1 p.m. on Zoom. Oh, uh oh, there is still time to sign up for Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life class with Reverend Sidney Steen. Okay, it's going to be on Tuesdays, uh, 7 to 9.30, in person and on Zoom through April 19th. Don't miss out on this brand new exciting class. You will learn how to apply science of mind principles, practices, and methods to transform your life in the areas of relationships, prosperity, and health. What could be better than that? Everyone is welcome. Sign up on our website. Cost is $170. This class counts toward practitioner training. Okay, on April 15th, we will have a Good Friday service followed by a fundraising dinner. WWJE, what would Jesus eat? 
a delicious four-course Middle Eastern dinner. Tickets for the dinner are 35 and are available on our website or on, su or on Sunday on the patio. All right, calling all kids, parents, and friends. On Easter Sunday, April 17th, we will have an egg hunt for our youth on the church lawn immediately following the 9.45 a.m. service. All kids are welcome. So you can go too, Reverend Sidney. <laughs> and be sure to invite your family and friends. If you would like to donate filled plastic eggs, please bring them to the office. Thank you. Uh, Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. And finally, visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. So, um, real quick, I want to thank some people. Uh, Barbara Berg has been holding the high watch at home, holding vigil online for us. Our Facebook Live support is Liz Racy. Zoom support has been Alma Alvarez. With, uh, she's our host. Brenda Jordan is our Zoom host. In Sanctuary, Lights and Sound, Adam Keshen, thank you. And um, we see our greeters, our ushers, Terry Prince and Colleen Butler. Our Sanctuary Media team today was Blair Thompson, Nikki Savara, Soloist Margaret Owens, and we can get your music at margaretowens.com, is that correct? Yes, I love it. <laughs> Sam Krieger is our music director, and he always brings it. <laughs> Carrie Herrera, you are a goddess. <laughs> Reverend Diane and myself are so glad to have you. If you need prayer with a practitioner, we have practitioners. And if you've never had prayer with a practitioner, I want to invite you to do that. We call that a one-minute miracle. Um, what do I want to do now? Okay, so I'm going to pray us out, and then I'm going to invite the sharing one more time of this amazing talent. So let's just pray out knowing that we are, we are what we have been waiting for. We are the gift. We are that change. We are all of that because we know that we are awake now. So we move from, from any idea of sleeping into full awakening, and we bring the light we are the light. We live the light, remembering always that right where we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Blessed always, blessed. Have a blessed week.